Hello everyone and welcome back to another Power Automate video. In this video, I'm going to show you why you should not, under certain circumstances, use either the Get Items action to get data from SharePoint or the List Rows action to get data from Databus. And principally, this is because the performance of those actions is quite poor, especially if you're working with large data sets. But I'll show you in the demo and uh, you'll see the difference that uh, you can make to those actions and how you can speed them up significantly. So I've got here a, um, a very simple list of 10,000 records and we're going to be using that in our flow. So in this flow, I have got um, a get items action and a send a HTTP request to SharePoint action. They both do the same thing. Um, and they both get the same data. Uh, and that is 5,000 records, the first 5,000 records of the 10,000 records. So if I press test on there, um, I've included in the flow some actions that allow us to accurately time each action. So get items took three seconds and send a HTTP request to SharePoint took one second. But what I want to show you is I've got a comparison down here that gives us some more accurate information. But let's just take a look. I've got an I've got an action here which brings out the first record from the get items action and we'll paste it in here. Now, if we remember the SharePoint list, we only had five fields. Um, so we've got title and field zero, two, three, four, and five. Um, now, oftentimes when you're manipulating data or doing lookups, this is all you want. The rest that's come out is all metadata. And that is because the get items action requests full metadata. If we have a look at the first record from the HTTP action, the only thing it brings back is exactly what the, the fields that we've requested. So, how can we implement this? Well, it's quite easy to do. Well, let's have a look at the comparison first. So with the get items action, it took around three seconds and the HTTP took under a second, 0 0.8 seconds. The payload size for that, those 5,000 records was 8,300,000 characters. And for the HTTP, it was 481,000. So you can see if you had very wide number of columns and a large number of rows, it would the difference would be huge. So let's have a look at how that works. So the send a HTTP request to SharePoint, all you really need is this underscore API web lists get by title. You put the title of the list in items, and then you can add your fields that you're after. So you can use the dollar select. The dollar top defines how many records you want back. And you can also add in OData filters there as well with dollar filter. And there's a few other neat functions you can do there. I'll link to the uh, API page on the Microsoft website in the description that shows you how to do that. So the key part is this, where it says application JSON, OData equals no metadata. This is what instructs the flow this is why I instruct SharePoint not to return all of that unnecessary data. Um, and there are three possible values for this, all with different meanings. I'll link to the um, page on Microsoft.com that shows what each does as well. Um, but a lot of times when I'm working with data, I don't need any of that metadata. Um, and it's exactly the same for SharePoint. But before we go to there, let me just point out a couple of disadvantages of this method. <clears throat> in get items, we could just go into settings and turn on pagination. And pagination would allow us to get more than the standard 5,000 maximum, because it would just keep looping around and getting more and more items up to the maximum we specify in here, up to a maximum of 100,000. With this, there are no pagination options. So if we want to paginate through more than 5,000 rows of data, we have to do that ourselves. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. The other thing is that with the get items, it's returned for us the JSON schema, 
So there's no need to do a parse JSON or any of those things. All of those values are available as dynamic content. With the sender HTTP request, we don't get any dynamic content from there. Now, I'm just about to do another video on the parse JSON action that shows you how you can enhance that. And I'll link that video in the description as well. But you can see here, it's possible to make the output of parse JSON even better than you would get from the action natively. So you can see I have given each field a nice description to find the whole thing as a respondent and you can add descriptions onto fields. So check that video out, which I will also link. So let's go and have a look at the same thing in Dataverse and then we'll come back and tackle the pagination. Okay, so here we are in the same, exactly the same flow really, but with the data source um, of uh, Dataverse. And this is a bit better because you can pick the columns in the list rows action, but it still doesn't give you an option for the OData level that you're wanting. So if anybody from Microsoft or the product team is watching, it would be a super cool option to be able to specify the required metadata level in the advanced options of the action. But let's get back to the Dataverse example. Um, so in this case, instead of using list rows, I'm doing invoke HTTP request. So now let's have a look at that. Okay, so let's have a look at our comparison. Okay, so get items took two seconds and HTTP took under a second. And the payload size was six and a half million characters versus one and a half million characters. Let's have a look at a single row. So in this case, it's even bigger in Dataverse. From there to there is one row. And let's have a look at our first record when we've used the HTTP action. That is one row. So, as you can see, it's a big difference in Dataverse as well. And also remember that the maximum size of, an, of the amount of data that any action can take in Power Automate is 100 meg. So if you do return a lot of lines, a lot of rows of data, you could easily go over that 100 meg on a large data set. Also, if you're returning data back to a Power App, um, you'll get better responsiveness by not using the standard list rows or uh, get items action. So let's now flip back and have a look at pagination, which is the same, um, you deal with it in the same way on Power Automate, on uh, SharePoint as you do with Dataverse and even Graph, they're all the same. And everything that I've said about these two data sources also applies to Microsoft Graph. So let's go and have a look at some pagination. Okay, so the pagination flow is a little bit different. So I start with two variables. The first is called API variable, which is a string. And this just contains the address of the required for the HTTP lookup, exactly as we have before, but this time it's in a variable. And I have a, an array variable called HTTP results. So, my do until action, I've got do until API variable is equal to complete. So we send a HTTP request to SharePoint as before, but we use the output of that variable as the URI. Everything else remains the same. This is where it gets a bit different. So I'm going to append to the array variable the outputs of the send a HTTP request. But what I'm going to do is use this expression. So from the inner part of that expression, the output gets converted to a string. So from JSON to a string. And then I use slice with the parameters one and minus one. And that's because the output of send a HTTP request will be a JSON array. And the first character will be an opening square bracket and the last character will be a closing square bracket. So we're just chopping those off at either end and then we'll recombine them later. And then we go into another 
um, variable action, and we're going to set the value of API variable, which is used to control this loop. This is an if statement. Let's go and have a look at it outside of here. So we're testing if the send a HTTP request to SharePoint gave us back an OData next link property. And that's how you can tell if there are more records to fetch. If it isn't there, it will be equal to null. So if it is null, then we're going to set this value to complete. If it isn't null, then we'll get that value of OData next link and bring it into our variable. And that will then go and get the next 5,000 records. Then after that, we recombine them all. So let's have a look at that um, expression. So from the inside, we're going to join that array, that array variable we've got with a comma to make it a one long list of records. Then we're going to concat an opening square bracket and a closing square bracket to make it into an array. And then finally, we'll convert it back to JSON with the JSON expression. And that is it really. So let's have a look at the pagination example. And we can have a look inside the results and see that OData next link come through as well. So in this case, because the number of records was more, we can see the difference in speed is becoming more apparent. So the get items took nine seconds, just over nine seconds, and the HTTP method took three seconds. Here we've got a character length of 16 million or closer to 17 million, and here we've only got half a million. So you can see the time reduction was about 66%. And the payload size difference was obviously huge. Um, so the, the, the method that's been used in this flow will work exactly the same for SharePoint, Graph, and Dataverse. So if we have a look at what came in the first iteration of the loop, we can see the first value that was returned was this OData next link. We have a look at the second iteration. We can see there is no OData next link. So that variable here will have been set to complete. Whereas in the previous iteration, it would have been set to the correct address to get the next batch of records. So that is why you shouldn't always use list items or list rows because they just aren't very quick. As I said, it would be nice if Microsoft included an option that we could specify the metadata level we wanted to get back because sometimes you do want that metadata. And if you do, you can still use the send a HTTP request method and just specify those additional fields that you want. So I hope this video is helpful in optimizing some of your flows. Do check out the other video on using parse JSON more effectively um, because there's quite a lot more that you can do with that action than it would first appear. So I'll see you in the next video. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.